the Sefer of Maccabeum Shani, or also called the second book of Maccabees chapter 1. The brethren, the Yehudim, that be at Yerushalayim and in the land of Yehuda, wish unto the brethren, the Yehudim, that are throughout Mitzrayim, health and peace, shalom. Elohim be gracious unto you, and remember his covenant that he made with Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, his faithful servants, and give you all a heart to serve him, and to do his will, with a good courage and a willing mind, and open your hearts in his Torah, and his commandments, and send you shalom, and Shema, and hear your prayers, and be at one with you, and never forsake you in time of trouble. And now we be here praying for you. What time as Demetrius reigned in the hundred three score and ninth year, we, the Yuhadim, wrote unto you in the extremity of trouble that came upon us in those years. From the time that Yochan and his company revolted from the Kodesh land and kingdom, and burned the porch, and shed innocent blood, then we prayed unto Yahweh, and were heard. We offered also sacrifices, and fine flour, and lighted the lamps, and set forth the loaves. And now we that ye keep the feast of Hanukkah in the month of Kislev, in the hundred fourscore and eighth year, the people that were at Yerushalayim and in Yehuda, and the council, Sanhedrin, and Yehuda send greetings and health unto Aristobulus, king Ptolemy's master, whom was of the stock of the anointed priests, Kohanim, and to the Yehudim that were in Mitzrayim, insomuch as Elohim has delivered us from great peril, we thank him highly, as having been in battle against a king. For he cast them out that fought within the Kodesh city. For when the leader has come into Persia, and the army with him that seemed invincible, they were slain in the temple of Nania by the deceit of Nania's priests. For Antiochus, as though he would marry her, came into the place, and his friends that were with him to receive money in name of a dowry, which, when the priests of Nania had set forth, and he was entreated with a small company into the compass of the temple, they shut the temple as soon as Antiochus was come in, and opening a privy door of the roof, they threw stones like thunderbolts, and struck down the captain, hewn them in pieces, smote off their head, and cast those that were without. Baruch be our Elohim in all things, who has delivered up the wicked. Therefore, Whereas we are now purposed to keep the purification of the temple up on the five and twentieth day of the month of Kislev, we thought it be necessary to certify you thereof that ye also might keep it as a fe feast of Hanukkah and of the fire which was given us when Nehemiah offered sacrifice. After that, he had built the temple and the altar. 
4. When our fathers were led into Persia, the Kohanim, the priests that were then devout, took the fire of the altar privately and hid it in a hollow place of a pit without water, where they kept it sure, so that the place was unknown to all men. Now, after many years, when it pleased Elohim, Nehemiah, being sent from the king of Persia, Cyrus, did send of the posterity of those priests that had hid it to the fire. But when they told us they found no fire but thick water, then commanded he them to draw it up and bring it. And when the sacrifice were laid on, Nehemiah commanded the priest to sprinkle the wood and the things laid thereupon the, with the water. Mayim. When the, this was done, and the time came that the sun shone, which afore was hid in a cloud, there was a great fire kindled, so that every man marveled, and the priests made a prayer while the sacrifice was consuming. I say, both the priests and all the rest, Yonathan, beginning, and the rest answering thereunto, as ne Nehemiah did. And the prayer was after this manner, O Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, Barak, creator of all things, who is fearful and strong, and Zadok, righteous and chesed, merciful, and the only and gracious Hanan, King Melech. So, O Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh, creator of all things, who is fearful and strong and righteous and merciful, and the only and gracious King, the only giver of all things, the only just, almighty, and everlasting, Le'olam Va'ed, you that deliver Shua, Yisrael from all trouble, and did choose the fathers, and sanctify them, receive the sacrifice for your whole people, Yisrael, and guard your own portion, and sanctify it. Gather those together that are scattered from us, Deliver them that serve among the heathen. Look upon them that are despised and abhorred, and let the heathen know that you are our Elohim. Punish them that oppress us, and with pride do us wrong. Plant your people again in your Kodesh holy place, as Moshe has spoken, and the Kohanim sung psalms of thanksgiving. Now, when the sacrifice was consumed, Nehemiah commanded the water that was left to be poured on the great stone. When this was done, there was kindled a flame, but it was consumed by the light that shined from the altar. So when this matter was known, it was told the king of Persia that in the place where the priests ha that were led away had hid the fire, there appeared water, and that Nehemiah had purified the sac sacrifices therewith. Then the king, enclosing the place, made it Kodesh, after he had tried the matter, and the king took many gifts and bestowed there thereof on those whom he would gratify. And Nehemiah 
called this thing Neph Naphthar, which is as much as to say a cleansing, but many called it Nephu. Maccabeum Shani, 2 Maccabees, Chapter 2. It was also found in the records that Yirmiyahu the prophet commanded them that were carried away to take of the fire as it has been signified, and how that the prophet, having given them the Torah, charged them not to forget the commandments of Yahweh, and that they should not err in their minds when they see images of silver and gold with their ornaments, and with other such speeches exhorted them that the Torah should not depart from their hearts. It was also contained in the same writings that the prophets, being warned of Elohim, commanded the tabernacle of the ark to go with him as he went forth into the mountain where Moshe climbed up and saw the heritage of Elohim and where Yirmiyahu came hither. He found a hollow cave wherein he laid the tabernacle and the ark and the altar of incense, and so stopped the door. And some of those that followed him came to mark the way, but they could not find it, which Yermiyahu perceived. He blamed them, saying, As for that place it shall be unknown until the time that Elohim gather his people again together and receive them unto mercy. Then shall Yahweh show them these things, and the glory, the Shekinah of Yahweh, shall appear, and the clouds also, as it was showed under Moshe, and as where Shlomo desired that the place might be honorably sanctified. It was also declared that he being wise, offered the sacrifice of dedication and of the finishing of the temple. And as when Moshe prayed unto Yahweh, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifices. Even so prayed Shlomo also, and the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings. And Moshe said, because of the sin offering was not to be eaten, it was consumed. So Shalomah kept those eight days. The same things also were reported in the writings and the commandments of Nehemiah, and how he founding a library gathered together the Acts of the Kings, Chronicles, and of the Prophets, and of David, and the Sepharim of the kings, concerning the Kodesh gifts. In like manner also Yehuda gathered together all those things which had been lost by reason of the war we had, and they remain with us. Wherefore, if ye have need thereof, send some to fetch them unto you. Whereas we then are about to celebrate the purification, we have written unto you, and ye shall do well, if ye keep the same days. We hope also that the Elohim that delivered all his people, and gave them all a heritage, and a Malkut, a, the kingdom, and the priesthood, and the sanctuary, as he promised in the Torah, will shortly have mercy upon us, and gather us together out of every land under heaven into the holy place. For he has, he has delivered us out of great trouble, and has purified the place. Now, as concerning Yehuda Maccabee and his brethren, the purification of the great temple and the dedication of the altar, 
and the wars against Antiochus Epiphanes and Eupater his son, and the ma manifest signs that came from heaven unto those that behaved themselves manfully to their honor for Yehudism, so that being but a few, they overcame the whole country and chased barbarous multitudes and recovered again the temple renowned all, all the world over and freed the city and upheld the Torah which were going down. Yahweh being gracious unto them with all favor. All these things I say being declared by Yahan of Cyrene in five Sephorim books. We will also to a bridge in one volume. And considering the infinite number and the difficulty which they find that desire to look into the narrations of the story for the variety of the matters we have been careful that they that will read may have delight and that they that are desirous to commit to memory might have ease and that all into the, whose hands it comes might have profit. Therefore, to us that have taken upon us this painful labor of abridging, it was not easy, but a manner of sweet and watching. Even as it is no ease unto him that prepares a banquet and seeks the benefit of the others, Yet for the pleasure of many we will undertake gladly to great pains, leaving to the author the exact handling of every particular, and laboring to follow the rules of an abridgment. For as the master builder of a new house must care for the whole building, but he that undertakes to set it out, the painted must seek out fit things for the adorning thereof. Even so, I think it is with us to stand upon every point, mitzvot, and go over every things at large, and to be curious in particulars, belonging to the first author of the story, but to us to use brevity and avoid much laboring of the work is to be granted to him that will make an abridgment. Here, when will we begin the story, only adding thus much to that which has been said, that it is a foolish thing to make a long prologue, and to be short in the story itself. Maccabeum Shani, Maccabees, 2 Maccabees, chapter 3. Now when the Kodesh city was inhabited with all shalom, peace, and the Torah was kept very well, because of the Kodesh of Anayahu, the high priest, and his hatred of wickedness, he came to pass that even the kings themselves did honor the place and magnify the temple with their best gifts, insomuch that Seleucus of Asia of his own revenues bore all the costs belonging to the service of the sacrifices. But one Shem Shimon of the tribe of ben Benjamin, who was made governor of the temple, fell out of the high, co high Kohanim, the high priest, about disorder in the city. And when he could not overcome on Yahoo, he got him to Apollinus, the son of Thrasius who then was governor of Selo Aram and 
Phoenicia and told him that the treasury in Yerushalayim was full of infinite sums of money so that the multitude of their riches which did not pertain to the account of the sacrifices was innumerable and that it was possible to bring all into the king's hand. Now when Apollon Nice came to the king and had showed him of the money whereof he had told the king chose out Heliodrius his treasurer and sent him with the commandment to bring him the foresaid money so forwith Heliodrius took his journey under a color of visiting the cities of Selo Aram and Phoenicia but indeed to fulfill the king's purpose and when he was come to Jerusalem he had been courteously received of the high, the high priest of the city so and he told him what intelligence was given of the money and declared wherefore he came and asked if these things were so indeed then the the high priest the Kohanim told him that there was much money laid up for the relief of widows and fatherless children and that some of it belongs to Hyrcanius son of Toviyahu a man of great dignity Tobid and was as a wicked Shimon had misinformed the sum whereof in all was four hundred talents of silver and four hundred of gold and that it was altogether impossible that such wrong should be done unto them that had committed it to the kodeshness of that place and to the majesty of and inviolable sanctity of the temple honored all over the world but Hel Heliodrius because of the king's commandment commandment given him said that in any wise it must be brought into the king's treasury so at the day which he appointed he entered in to uh, order this matter wherefore there was no small agony throughout the whole city but the Kohanim the priests prostrating themselves before the altar in their priests vestments called unto heaven upon him that made a Torah concerning things given to be kept that they should safely be preserved for such as had committed them to be kept then whoso had looked the the high priest in the face it would have wounded his heart for the countenance of the changing of his color declared the inward agony of his mind for the men was so compassed with fear and horror of the body that it was manifested to them that they looked upon him what sorrow he had in his heart others ran flocking out of their houses to the general supplication because the place was like to come into contempt and the women girt with sackcloth under their breasts abound in the streets and the Batulas the Almas the virgins that were kept in ran some to the gates and some to the walls and others looked out the windows and all holding their hands toward heaven the Shamayim made supplication then it would have pitied a man to see the falling down of the multitude of all sorts and the fear of the Kohanim the high priest being in such agony that 
they then called upon El Shaddai Yahweh to keep the things committed to, of trust safe and sure for those that had committed them. Nevertheless, Helodrius executed that which was decreed. Now, as he was there present himself with the guard about his treasure, the treasury, Yahweh Tezavot, and the prince of all power caused a great apparition so that all that presumed to come in with him were astonished at the power of Elohim and fainted and were sore afraid. For there appeared unto them a horse with a terrible rider upon him and adorned with a very fair covering, and he ran fiercely and smote at Helodrius with his forefeet, and it seemed that he had sat upon the horse, had complete harness of gold. Moreover, two other young men appeared before him, uh, notable in strength, excellent in beauty, and calmly in apparel, and stood by him on either side, and scourged him continually, and gave him many sore stripes. And Heliodrius fell suddenly onto the ground, and was compassed with great darkness, and they that were with him took him up, and put him into a litter. Thus him that lately came with a great train and with all his guard into the said treasury, they carried out, being unable to help himself with his weapons. And manifestly they acknowledged the power of Elohim as he by the hand of Elohim was cast down and lay speechless without all hope of life. But they praised Yahweh that had miraculously honored his own place, that the temple which a little afore was full of fear and tremble, trouble, when El Shaddai Yahweh Tezavot appeared, was filled with joy and gladness. Then straightway certain of Helodrius's friends uh, prayed Oniyahu that he would call upon El Elyon to grant him his life, who lay ready to give up the Ruach. So the, Ko the ha Kohanim Hagadol, the high priest, suspecting lest the king should misconceive that some treachery had been done to Helodrius by the Yuhadim, of offered a sacrifice for the health, health of the man. Now, was the Kohanim Hagadol, the high priest, was making atonement the same young men in the same clothing appeared to and stood beside Heliodrius, saying, Give Oni Yahu, the high priest, great thanks, insomuch for your sake Yahweh has granted you life, and seeing that you have been scourged from heaven, declare unto all men the mighty power of Elohim. And when they had spoken these words, they appeared no more. So Heliodrius, after he had offered sacrifice unto Yahweh, and made great vows unto him that had saved his life, and saluted on Yahu returned with his host to the king. Then testified he to all 
men the works of the great Gadol Elohim, which he had seen with his eyes. And when the king saw Heliodrius, he might be a fit man to be sent yet once again to Jerusalem. He said, If you have any enemy or traitor, send him thither, and you shall receive him well scourged, if he escape with his life, for in that place no doubt there is an especial power of Elohim, for he that dwells in heaven has his eye on that place, and defends it, and he beats and destroys them that come to hurt him, and the things concerning Heliodrius, and the keeping of the treasury fell out on this sort. Baruch Hashem. Maccabeum Shini, chapter 4, Second Maccabees, chapter 4. This Shimon, now of whom we spoke afore, having been a betrayer of the money and of his country, slandered Oni Yahu as he as if he was terrified Heliodrius, and been the worker of all these evil. Thus he bold to call him a traitor that had deserved well of the city, and tendered his own nation, and was so zealous of the Torah. But when their hatred went so far that by one of Shimon's faction murders of were committed, on Yahu, seeing the danger of, the, of this contention, and that Apollinus, as being the governor of Salo Aram and Phoenicia, did rage and increase Shimeon's malice. He went to the king, not to be an accuser of his countrymen, but seeking the good of all, both public and private, for he saw that it was impossible that the state should continue quiet, and Shimon leave his folly, unless the king did look thereunto. But after the death of Cyrus, Seleucus, when Antiochus called Epiphanes, took the king kingdom, Yakon, the brother of Onyahu, labored uh, underhand to be high priest, promising unto the king by intercession three hundred and three score talents of silver, and of another revenue eighty talents. Besides this, he promised to assign a hundred and fifty more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise, and for the training up of youth in the fashion of the heathen, and to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochus, or the Antiochians, oh, Ant Antiochians, which, when the king had granted, and he had gotten into his hand the rule, he forthwith brought his own nation to Yavanish fashion, and the royal privileges granted of special favor to the Yuhadim by the means of Yohanan, the father of Yu. Palomas, who went, went ambassador to Rome for amnity and aid. He took away and putting down the governments which were according to the Torah, he brought up new customs against the Torah, 
for he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his sub subjection and made them wear a hat now such as the height of Yavani fashions and increase of heathen heathenish manners through the exceeding profaneness of Yakon that wicked wretch and no high priest that the priests had no courage to serve any more at the altar but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices hastened to be partakers of the Torahlessness allowance in the place of exercise for the game of disgust called them forth not setting by the honors of their fathers but liking the glory of the Yovanim the Greeks best of all by reason whereof sore calamity came upon them for they had them to be their enemies and avengers whose customs they followed so earnestly and unto whom they desired to be like in all things for it is not a light thing to do wickedly against the Torah of Elohim but the time following shall declare these things now when the game that was used every fourth year was kept at so the king being present this ungracious Jachan sent special messengers to Yerushalayim who were Antiochans to carry 300 drachms of silver to the sacrifice of Hercules which even the bearers thereof thought fit not to bestow upon the sacrifice because it was not convenient but to be reserved for other charges this money then in regard of the sender was appointed to Hercules sacrifice but became of the bears thereof it was employed to the marking of galleys now when Apollinus the son of Manathusus was sent to Mitzrayim for the coronation of King Ptolemy Philometer and Tychicus, understanding him not to be well, affected to his affairs, provided for his own safety. Whereupon he came to Yafo, and from thence to Yerushalayim, where he was honorably received of Jakan, and of the city, and was brought in with torch alight and with great shoutings and so afterward went with his host unto Phoenicia three years afterward Jahan sent Menelius the aforesaid Shimon brother to bear the money unto the king and to put him in mind of certain necessary matters but he bring being brought to the presence of the king when he magnified him for the glorious appearance of his power got the priesthood to himself offering more than Jakan by 300 talents of silver so he came with the king uh, king's mandate bringing nothing worthy of high priesthood but having the fury of a cruel tyrant and the rage of the savage beast then Yakan 
who had undermined his own brother, being undermined by another, was compelled to flee into the country of the Ammonim. So, Menelaus got the principality, but as for the money that he had promised unto the king, he took no good order for it, albeit Sostratus, Sosratus, the ruler of the castle, required it, for unto him apparently the gathering of the customs. Wherefore, they were both called before the king. Now, M Manileus left his brother Lysimachus in his stead in the priesthood, and Sostriestus left uh, Cretus, Crete, who was governor of the C Cyprenians. While those things were in doing, they of Tsarsus and Malos, Malta, made insurrection because they were given to the king's concubine called An Antiochus. Then came the king in all haste to appease the matter, leaving Antiochus or, excuse me, leaving Andronicus, a man in authority for his deputy. Now, Menelaus, supposing that he had gotten a convenient time, stole certain of the gold out of the temple and gave some of them to Andronicus. And some he sold into Zoar and the cities round about, which when Oniyahu knew of the surety, he reproved him and withdrew himself in, in a sanctuary at Daphne that lies in Antioch, the temple of uh, Delphi. Wherefore, Manelaus, taking Andronicus apart, prayed about to get Oniyahu into his hands, who being persuaded thereunto, and coming to Oniyahu in deceit, gave him his right hand with oaths. And Though he were suspected by him, yet persuaded he him to come forth of the sanctuary, whom wherewith he shut up without regard of justice. For the which cause not only the Yuhadim, but many also of the other nations took great indignation and were much grieved for the unjust murder of the man. And when the king was come again from the places about Cilicia, the Yuhadim that were in the city, and certain of the Yavanim, the Greeks, were abhorred the fact also, complained because Oniyahu was slain without cause, Therefore, Antiochus was heartily sorry, and moved to pity, and wept because of the sober and modest behavior of him that was dead. And being kindled with anger, forthwith he took away Andronicus his purple, and rent off his clothes, and leading him through the whole city unto that very place where he had committed impiety against Onyahu. There slew he the cursed murderer. Thus Yahweh rewarded him his punishment as he deserved. 
Now, when many sacrileges had been committed in the city by Lysiamachus, with the consent of Menelaus, and the fruit thereof was spread abroad, and the multitude gathered themselves together against Lysimachus, many vessels of gold being already carried away. Whereupon the common people rising and being filled with rage, Lysimachus armed about three thousand men and began first to offer violence. One, Oranus, being the leader, a man far gone in years, and no less in folly. They then, seeing the attempt of Lysimachus, some of them caught stones, some clubs, other taking handfuls of dust that were next at hand, cast them all together upon Lysim Lysimachus and those who sat upon them. Thus many of them were wounded, and some they struck to the ground, and all of them forced to flee. But as for the temple robber himself, they, him, they killed beside the treasury of these matters. Therefore there was an accusation laid against Menelaus. Now, when the king came to Zoar, three men that were sent from the senate pleaded the cause before him. But Menelaus, being now convicted, promised Ptolemy, the son of Dorimenus, to give him much money, if he would pacify the king toward him. Whereupon Ptolemy, king, taking the king aside into a certain gallery, as it were to take the air, brought him to be of another mind, insomuch as he discharged Menelaus from the accusations, who notwithstanding was cause of all the mischief, and those poor men, who, if they were told their cause, yea, before the Scythians, brethren, should have been judged innocent, them he condemned to death. Thus they that followed the matter for the city, for the people, and for the holy vessels, did soon suffer unjust punishment. Wherefore even they of Zoar, moved with hatred of that wicked deed, caused them to be honorably buried, and uh, so through the covetousness of them that, that were of power, Menelaus remained still in authority, increasing his malice and being a great traitor to the citizens. Maccabean Shani, 2 Maccabees chapter 5. About the same time, Antiochus prepared his second voyage into Mitzrayim. And w then it happened that through all the city, for the space almost of forty days, there were seen horsemen running in the air, in cloth of gold and armed with lances, like a band of soldiers and troops of horsemen in array, encountering and running one against another with shaking of shields, and multitudes of pikes, and drawing of swords, and casting of spears, and glittering of golden ornaments, and harnesses of all sorts. Wherefore every man prayed that the apparition might turn to good, 
Now when there was gone forth a false rumor, as though Antiochus had been dead, Yachon took at least a thousand men, and suddenly made an assault upon the city. And they that were upon the walls being put back, and the city at length taken. Malalanus fled into the castle, but Yachon slew his own citizens without mercy, not considering that to get the day of them of his own nation would be a most unhappy day for him, but thinking they had been his enemies and not his countrymen, whom he conquered. How be it, for all this he obtained not the principality, but at the last received shame for the reward of his treason, and fled again into the country of the Ammonium. In the end, therefore, he had an unhappy return, being accused before Aratus, the king of the Aravim, fleeing from the city to city, pursued of all men, hated as a forsaker of the Torah, and being had in abomination as an open enemy of his countrymen and his country. He was cast out of Mitzrayim, thus he had driven many out of his uh, country, perished in the strange land, retiring to to the Lake Lake Dominions, and thinking they to find help by reason of his kindred, and that he had cast out many unburied, had none to mourn for him, nor any solemn funerals at all, nor sepulchre with his fathers. Now, when this was done, done came to the king's ear, he thought that Yehuda had revolted, whereupon removing out of Mitzrayim in a furious mind, he took the city by force of arms, and commanded his men of war not to spare such as they met, and to slay such as went up into the houses. Thus were there was killing of young men, making away uh, men, women, and children, slaying of virgins and infants. And they there were destroyed within the space of three whole days, fourscore thousand, wherefore forty thousand were slain in the conflict, and no fewer sold than the slain. Yet was he not content with this, but presumed to go into the most Kodesh place, the holy temple of all the world. Menelaus, that traitor to, uh, to the Torah, and to his own country, being his guide, and taking the holy vessels with polluted hands, and with profane hands pulling down the things that were dedicated by other kings to the augmentation and glory and honor of that place, he gave them away. And so haughty was Antiochus in mind, that he considered not that Yahweh was angry for a while for the sins of them that dwelt in the city and therefore his eye was not upon the place. For, had they not been formally wrapped in many sins, this man, as soon as he had come, had forthwith been scourged, and put back from his presumption, as Heliodrius was, whom Seleucus the king, Cyrus, sent to the, the view the treasury, 
Nevertheless, Elohim did not choose the people for the place's sake, but the place for the people's sake, and therefore the place itself, that was particular with them of the ad adversity that happened to the nation, did afterward communicate in the benefits sent from Yahweh. And as it was forsaken in the wrath of El Shaddai, so again the Gadol, the great Yahweh, being reconciled. It was set up with all glory. So when Antiochus had carried out of the temple a thousand and eight hundred talents, he departed in all haste unto Antioch weaning his pride to make the land navigable and the sea passable by foot. Such was the haughtiness of his mind, and he left governors to vex the nation at Yerushalayim. Philip, for his country, a, a Phrygian, and for manner more barbarous than he that sent set him there, and Gerzaim and Dronicus, and besides Menelaus, who worse than all the rest bore a heavy hand over the citizens, having a malicious mind against his countrymen, the Yehudim. He sent also that detestable ringleader Apollonus, Apollinus with an army of two and twenty thousand, commanding him to slay all those that were in their best age, and to sell the women and the younger sort, who coming to Yerushalayim, and pretending peace did forbear till, till the holy day of the Shabbat, when taking the Yehudim keeping holy Kodesh days, he commanded his men to arm themselves, and so he slew all them that were gone to the celebrating of the Shabbat, and running through the city with weapons slew great multitudes. But Yahuda Maccabee and nine others are thereabout withdrew themselves into the wilderness and live in the mountains after the manner of the beasts with his company who fed on the herbs continually lest they should be partakers of the pollution. Vegetarian. Maccabees chapter 6 not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Yehudim to depart from the Torah of their fathers, and not to live after the Torah of Elohim, and to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem, and to call it the temple of Jupiter, Olympus, and that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire, that dwelt in that place. <clears throat> and coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people, for the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the other people, Goyim, who dallied with harlots and had to do with the women within the circuit of the holy place, and besides that brought in things that were against the Torah. The altar also was filled with profane things, which the Torah forbids. Neither was it lawful for a man to guard the days of the Shabbat, or ancient feasts, the Moedim, or to profess himself at all to be a Yehudi. And in the day of the king's birth every month, 
there were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices, and when the feasts of Bacchus was kept, the Yuhadim were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus, carrying ivies. Moreover, they went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Yuhadim, that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of the sacrifices, and whoso would not confirm themselves to the manner of the other people should be put to death. When might a man have seen the present misery? For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, who when they had openly led round about the city, the babies handing at their breasts, they cast them down headlong from the wall. And others that had run together into the caves nearby to guard the Shabbat secretly, being discovered by Philip, were all burnt together because they had made conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. Now I beseech those that read this Sefer that they be not discouraged for these calamities, but that they judge for those punishments not to be for destruction but for a chastening of our nation. For it is a sign of His great goodness. When wicked doers are not suffered any long time, but forthwith punished, for not as with other nations, whom Yahweh patiently forbears to punish, till they have come to the fullness of their sins, so deal he with us, lest that, being come to the height of sin afterward, he should take vengeance us all. And therefore he never withdraw his mercy from us, and though he punish with adversity, yet he never forsake his people. But let this that we at spoken be forsaken his people, but lest this that we at spoken be for a warning unto us, and now will we come to a declaring of the matter in a few words. Eliezer one of the principal scribes, a very aged man, and of well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. But he, choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment, as it behooved them to come, that are res resolute to stand out against such things, as are against the Torah, for love of life to be tasted. But they that had the charge of that wicked feast for the old acquaintance, acquaintances they had with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provisions, such as was lawful for him to use, and make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king, that in so doing he might be delivered from death, and for the old friendship with them find favor. But he began to consider discreetly, 
and as became his age, and his excellency of his ancient years, and the honor of his gray head and beard, whereon has come, and his most honor honest education from a child, or rather, the holy, the Kodesh Torah, made and given by Elohim, therefore he answered accordingly, and will them straight ways to send him to Sheol, the grave. For it becomes not our age, said he, in any wise to dis to disassemble, where by many young persons might think that El Ezar, being fourscore years old and ten, were gone to a strange religion, and so they, th through my hypocrisy and desire to live a little time and a moment longer should I dis be deceived by me, and I gain a stain on my old age, and make it abominable. For th through for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, Yet should I not escape the hand of El Shaddai, neither alive nor dead, wherefore now? Manfully change this life, I will show myself such one as my age requires, and leaves a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously, and and the honorable and holy Kodesh Torah. And when he said these words, immediately he went to the torment. They that led him changing the good will they bore him a little beforehand into hatred, because the foresaid speech is proceeding as they thought, from a desperate mind, but when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, It is manifest unto Yahweh that has the Kodesh knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death. I now endure sore pains in body of being beaten, but in soul I well content to suffer these things because I fear him. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble courage and a memorial of virtue not only unto young men, but unto all his nation. Maccabeum Chini, Sefer of 2nd Maccabees, Chapter 7. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken, and compelled by the king against the Torah to taste swine's flesh, and were tormented with scourges and whips. But one of them that spoke first said thus, What would you ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the Torah of our fathers. Then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which forthwith, being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spoke first, and to cut off the utmost parts of his body. And the rest of his brethren and his mother, looking on, now when 
he was thus maimed in all his members. He commanded him, being yet alive, to be brought to the fire, and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for the good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus, Yahweh Elohim looks upon us, and in emet truth has comfort in us, as Moshe in his song, which witnessed to their faces declared, saying, And he shall be comforted in his servants. So when the first was dead after this number, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, Will you eat before you be punished throughout every member of your body? But he answered in his own language and said, No. Wherefore he also received the next torment in order, as the former did, and when he was at his, the last gasp, he said, You like a fury take us out of this present life, but the king of the world shall ri raise us up, who have died for his Torah unto everlasting life. After him was the third made a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put out his tongue, and that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully, and said courageously, These I had from heaven, and for his Torah I despise them, and found him one hope to receive them again, insomuch that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage, for he ha had nothing regarding the pains. Now, when the man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, It is good, Tov, being put to death by you men, to look for the hope of Elohim to be raised up again by him. As for you, you shall have no resurrection to life. Afterwards, they brought the fifth also, and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king, and said, You have power over men. You are corruptible. You do what you will. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of Elohim, but abide a while. And behold, his good his great power, how he will torment you and your seed. After him also they brought the sixth, <laughs> and being ready to die, said, Be not be deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against our Elohim, therefore marvelous things are done unto us. But think not that take in hand to strive against Elohim that you shall escape unpunished. But the mother was marvelous above all, and she was worthy of honorable memory. Uh, excuse me. For the whole, she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day. 
she bore it with good courage because of the hope that she had in Yudhevave, Yahweh. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, Ivrim Hebrew, filled with courageous ruach and stirred her up her womanish thoughts with many stomach manly stomach I have tears in my eyes forgive me she said unto them I cannot tell how ye came unto my womb for I neither gave you breath nor life, neither it was it was I that formed the members of every one of you, but doubtless the creator of the heavens and the world, who formed the generations of man and found out the beings of all things, will also of his own hesed, his mercy, give you breath and life, Kai, again. As ye now regard not your own selves for his Torah's sake, now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspected it to be a reproachful speech, while the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and happy man if he would turn from the Torah of his fathers, and that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with his affairs. But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. And she, bowing herself towards him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn spoke in her country language Ivrim Hebrew on this manner O Ben O my son have pity upon me that bore you nine months in my womb and gave you such three years and nourished you and brought you up unto this age, and endured this trouble of education. I beseech you now, my son, look upon the Shamayim, the heavens, and the Eretz, the earth, and all that is therein, and consider that Elohim made them of things that were not and so was mankind made likewise. Fear not his tormentor, this tormentor, but being worthy of your brethren, take your death that I may have receive you again in mercy with your brethren. While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's command, but I will obey the commandment of the Torah and was given unto the fathers of Moshe, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Echad, and you that have been of the author of all this mischief against the Ivrim, shall not escape the hand of Elohim. For we suffer because of our sin, and the living Yahweh be angry with 
us for a little while. For our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. But you, O oh godless, Torahless man, and of all those most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with pride, with uncertain hope, lifting up your hands against the servants of Elohim. For you have not yet escaped the judgment of El Shaddai, who sees all things. For our brethren who now have suffered a short pain are dead under Elohim's covenant of everlasting life. Hi. And you, through the judgments of Elohim, shall receive just punishment for your pride. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the Torah of our fathers, beseeching Elohim that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that you, by torment and plague, by confess that he alone is Elohim, and that in me and my brethren the wrath of El Shaddai, which is justly brought upon our nation, may cease. Then the king, being in a rage, handed him worse than all the rest, and took it grievously that he was mocked so that this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in Yahweh. Last of all, after the sons, the mother died. Let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feasts and the extreme tortures. Maccabeum Shani, Sefer of Second Maccabees, Chapter 8. Then Yehuda Maccabee and they that were with him went privily into the towns and called their kinsfolks together and took unto them all such as committed in the Yehudim faith and assembled about six thousand men. And they called upon Yahweh, that he would look upon the people that was trodden down of all, and also pity the temple profaned of wicked men, and that he would have compassion upon the city, sore defaced and ready to be made even with the ground, and here the blood that cried unto him, and remember the wicked slaughter of harmless infants and the blasphemies committed against his name, and that he would show his hatred against the wicked. And when Yehuda Maccabee had his company about him, he could not be withstood by the heathen, for the wrath of Yahweh was turned into mercy. Therefore he came at unawares, and burnt up towns and city, and got into his hands the most uh, commodious places, and overcame and put to flight no small number of his enemies, but specially took he advantages of the night for such privy attempts insomuch that the fruit of his kodeshness was spread everywhere. So where Philip saw that this man increased by little and little and that things prospered with him still more and more he wrote unto Ptolemy the governor of Selo Aram and Phoenicia, 
and to yield more aid to the king's affairs. Then forthwith choosing Nacanor, the son of Pat Roculus, one of his special friends, he spent sent him with no fewer than twenty thousand of all nations under him to root out the whole generation of the Yuhadim. And with him he joined also Gorgias, a captain, who in matters of war had great experience. So Nicanor, Nicanor undertook to make so much money of the captive Yuhadim as should defray the tribute of two thousand talents which the king was to pay to the Romaim. Wherefore, Im immediately he sent to the cities upon the sea coast proclaiming a sale of the capture Yuhadim and promising that they should have fourscore and ten bodies for one talent, not expecting the vengeance that was to follow upon him from El Shaddai. Now, when the word was brought unto Yehuda of Nicanor's coming, and he had imparted unto those that were with him that the army was at hand. They that were fearful and distrusted the justice of Elohim fled and conveyed themselves away. Others sold all that they had and withal besought Yahweh to deliver them from being sold by the wicked Nacanor before they met together. And if not for their own sakes, yet for the covenants, the mitzvot he had made with their fathers, and for his kodesh and glorious name's sake, by which they were called. So Yahuda Maccabee called his men together unto the number of six thousand and exhorted them not to be stricken with terror of the enemy, nor to fear the great multitude of the heathen whom came wrongly against them, but to fight manfully and to set before their eyes the injury that they had unjustly done to the Kodesh set-apart place, and the cruel handling of the city, whereof they made a mockery, and also the taking away of the government of their forefathers. For they, said he, trust in their weapons and boldness, but our confidence is in Al El Shaddai, our provider, who at the beck can cast down both them that come against us and also all the world. Moreover, he recounted unto them that helps their forefathers had found, and how they were delivered when under can Hajariv, a hundred fourscore and five thousand perished, and he told them of the battle that they had in Babel with the Galatanim, how they came but eight thousand in all to the business, with four thousand Macad Macedonians. Macedonians, for that the Macedonians, Macedonians, being perplexed, the eight thousand destroyed a hundred and twenty thousand 
because of the help that they had from the heavens, Shamayim, and so received a great booty. Thus, when he had made them bold with these words, and ready to die for the Torah and the country, he divided his army into four parts, and joined with himself his own brethren, leaders of each band, two with Shimeon and Yehoseph and Yohanathan, giving each other fifteen hundred men. Also, he appointed Eleazar to read the Kodesh Sephor. And when he had given them his watchword, the help of Elohim himself, leading the, band, the first band, and by the help of El Shaddai, they slew above nine thousand of their enemy and wounded and maimed the most part of Nicanor's host, and so put all to flight, and took their money that came to buy them, and pers pursued them far. But lacking time, they returned, for it was the day before the Shabbat, the day of preparation. And therefore they would be would no longer pursue them. So when they had gathered their armor together and spoiled their enemies, they occupied themselves about the Shabbat, yielding exceeding praise, Baharuk, and praise and thanks to Yahweh, and had preserved them unto that day that which was the beginning of mercy distilled, distilling upon them. And after the Shabbat, when they had given part of the spoils to the maimed and to the widows and the orphans and the remnant, they divided among themselves and their servants. When this was done, and when they had made a common supplication, they besought the merciful Yahweh to be reconciled with his servants forever. Moreover, of those that were with Timotheus and Bacchidus, who fought against them, they slew above twenty thousand and very easily got high and strongholds, and divided among themselves many spoils more, and made the maimed and orphans widows, yea, and the aged also equal in spoils with themselves. And when they had gathered their armor together, they laid them up carefully, in convenient places, and the remnant of the spoils they brought to Yerushalayim. They slew also Phil Archias, that wicked person who was with Tim Otheus, and had annoyed the Yehudim many years. Furthermore, at such time, as they kept the feast, the Moedim, for the victory in their country, they burnt Calisthenes, had that had set fire upon the holy gates, who had fled into a little house, and so he received a reward meet for his wickedness. As for that most ungracious Nicanor, who had brought a thousand merchants to buy the Yuhadim, he was th thoroughly through the help of Yuhadi, Yahweh brought down by them, of whom he made least account, and putting off his glorious apparel, and discharging his company, 
he came like a fugitive servant through a midland unto Antioch, having great, having very great dishonor, for that his host was destroyed. Thus he that took upon him to make good to the Romaim their tribute by means of the captives in you in Yerushalayim told abroad that the Yuhadim had Elohim to fight for them and therefore they could not be hurt because they followed the Torah that he gave to them. Maccabeum Shani, Sefer, second book of Maccabees. Chapter 9. About that time came Antiochus, or Antiochus, with dishonor out of the country of Persia, for he had entered the city called Parasopolis, and went about to rob the temple and to hold the city. Whereupon the multitude, running to defend themselves with their weapons, put them to flight. And so it happened that Antiochus, being put to flight of the inhabitants, returned with shame. Now, when he came to Ecbatain, news was brought him what had happened unto Nicanor and Timotheus. Then, swelling with anger, he thought to avenge upon the Yuhadim the disgrace done unto him by those that made him flee. Therefore commanded he his chariotmen to drive without ceasing and to dispatch the journey. The judgment of Elohim now following him for he had spoken proudly in this sort, that he would come to Yerushalayim and make it a common burying place of the Yuhadim. But Yahweh Tezavot, Ha Elohim of Yisrael, smote him with an incurable and invisible plague. For as soon as he had spoken these words, a pain of the bowels that was remediless came upon him, and sore torments of the inner parts, IBS, and the most justly. For he had tormented others' men's bowels with many and strange torments. How be it, he nothing at all ceased from his bragging, but still was filled with pride, breathing out fire in his rage against the Yuhadim, and commanded to haste the journey, but it came to pass that he fell down from his chariot carried violently, so that having a sore fall, all the members of his body were much pained. And thus he that a little afore thought he might command the waves of the sea, oh, so proud was he beyond the conditions of a man, and weigh the mountains in a balance, was now cast on the ground, and carried in a horse litter, showing forth unto all the manifest powers of Elohim, so that the worms rose up out of the body of the wicked man, and while he lived in sorrow and pain, his flesh fell away, and the filthiness of his smell was noisome to his army. And the man that thought a little afore he could reach 
to the stars of heaven no man could endure to carry for his intolerable stench and stink. Here, therefore, being plagued, he began to leave off his great pride and to come to the knowledge of himself by the scourge of Elohim, his pain increasing every moment. And when he himself could not abide his own smell, he said these words, It is meet to be subject unto Elohim, and that a man that is mortal should not proudly think of himself if he were Elohim. This wicked person vowed also unto Yahweh, who now no more would have mercy upon him, saying thus that the Kodesh city to, the, to which he was going to in haste to lay it even to the ground and to make it a common burial place, he would set at liberty. And as touching the Yuhadim, when he had judged not worthy so much as to be buried, but be, to be cast out with their children to be devoured by the fowls and the wild beasties, he would make them all equals to the citizens of Athens and the holy temple which before he had spoiled, he would garnish with goodly gifts and restore all the Kodesh vessels with many more, and out of his own revenue defray the charge belonging to the sacrifices, yea, and that he would also become a Yuhadi himself a ger, a gerim, and go through all the world that was inhabited and declare the power of Yahweh Elohim. But for all this his pains would not cease, for the just judgment of Elohim was come upon him. Therefore, Despairing of his health, he wrote unto the Yuhadim the Sefer underwritten, containing the form of the supplication after this in manner. Semicolon, Antiochus, king and governor, to the good Yuhadim, his citizens, which much joy, health, and prosperity if ye and your children fare well, and your affairs be to your commitment, I give very great thanks to Elohim, having my hope in heaven. As for me, I am weak, or else I would have remembered kindly your honor and good will returning out of Persia, and being taken with a grievous disease and desire, I thought it necessary to care for the common safety of all, not distrusting my health, but having great hope to escape this sickness, but considering that even my father, that what time he led an army into the high countries, appointed a successor, to the end that, if anything fell out contrary to expectation, or if any tidings were brought that were grievous, they of the land, knowing to whom the state was left, might not be troubled. Semicolon. Again, considering how that the princes <coughs> that our borders and neighbors unto my kingdom wait for 
opportunities and expect what shall be the event. I have appointed my son Antiochus king, whom I often committed and commanded unto many of you when I went up unto the high provinces, to whom I have written as follows, semicolon. Therefore, I pray and request you to remember the benefits that I have done unto you generally, and in special, and that every man will be still faithful to me and my son. For I am persuaded that he, understanding my mind, will favorably and graciously yield to your desires. Thus the murderer and blasphemer, having suffered most grievously, has entered other men, entreated other men. So died he a miserable death in a strange country in the mountains. And Philip, that was brought up with him, carried away his body, who also, fearing the son of Antiochus, went into Mitzrayim to Ptolemy Philometer. Maccabeum Shani Sefer 2nd Maccabees Chapter 10 Now Yahuda Maccabee and his company Yahweh guiding them recovered the temple and the city but the altars which the heathen had built in the open street and also the chapels they pulled down and having cleansed the temple, they made another altar, and striking stones, they took fire out of them, and offered a sacrifice after two years, and set forth incense, and lights, and showbread. When that was done, they fell flat down, and besought Yahweh that they might come no more into such troubles, but if they sinned any more against him, that he himself would chasten them with mercy, and that they might not be delivered unto the blasphemous and barbarous nation. Now upon that same day, but the strangers profaned the temple, on the very same day it was cleansed again. Even the five and twentieth day of the same month, which is Kislev, the twenty-fifth of Kislev. And they kept it, kept the eight days with gladness as in the feast of Sukkot, remembering that not long afore they had held the feast of Sukkot, when, as they wandered in the mountains and dens like beasts, therefore they bore branches and brought boughs and palms also, and sung psalms unto him that had given them of good success in cleansing his place. They ordained also by a common statute and decree that every year those days w should be kept of the whole nation of the Yuhadim. And this was the end of Antiochus, called the Epiphanes. Now, Will we declare the acts of Antiochus Eupater, who was the son of this wicked man, gathering briefly the calamities of the wars? So, when he was come to the crown, he set one Lysias over the affairs of his realm, and appointed him his chief governor 
of Salo Aram and Phoenicia. For Ptolemy, that was called Macron, choosing rather to do justice unto the Yuhadim for the wrong that had been done endeavoring to continue peace with them whereupon being accused of the king's friend before Eupater and called a traitor at every word because he had left Cyprus that Phil Philometer had committed unto him and departed to Antiochus Epiphanes and seeing that he was in no honorable place, he was discouraged that he poisoned himself and died. Dun, dun, dun. But when Gorgios was a governor of the holds, he hired soldiers and nourished war continually with the Yuhadim. And therewithal, the Edomium, the Edomites, having gotten into their hands the most uh, commodious holds, kept the Yuhadim occupied, and receiving those that were banished from Yerushalayim, <coughs> they went about to nourish war. Then they that were with Yehuda Maccabee made supplication and besought Elohim that he would be their helper. And so they ran with violence upon the strongholds of the Edomium, and assaulting them strongly, they won the holds, and kept off all that fought upon the wall, and slew all that fell into their hands and killed no fewer than twenty thousand. And because certain, who were no less than nine thousand, were fled together into two very strong castles, having all manner of things convenient to sustain the siege. Yehuda Maccabee left Shimon and Yosef and Zachariah also, and them that were with him, who were enough to besiege them, and departed himself unto those places which more needed his help. Now, they that were with Shimon being led with covetousness, were persuaded for money through certain of those that were in the castle, and took seventy thousand drachmas, and let some of them escape. But when it was told Yehuda Maccabee what was done, he called the governors of the peoples, the Sanhedrin, together, to accuse those men that they had sold their brethren for money, and set their enemies free to fight against them. So he slew those that were found traitorous, and immediately took the two castles, <clears throat> and having good success with his weapons, in all things he took in hand, he slew in the two holds strongholds more than twenty thousand. Now Timotheus, whom the Uhadim had overcome before, when he had gathered a great multitude of foreign forces and horses out of Asia, not just a few, they came as though he would take Yehuda by force of arms. But when he drew near, they that were with Yehuda Maccabee turned themselves to pray unto Elohim and sprinkled the earth upon their heads and girded their loins with sackcloth and fell 
down at the foot of the altar and besought him to be merciful to them and to be an enemy to their enemies and an adversary to their adversaries as the Torah declares. So after the prayer, they took their weapons and went on further from the city. <clears throat> and when they drew near to their enemies, they kept by themselves. Now, the sun being newly ri risen, they joined both together, the one part having together with their virtue their refuge also unto Yahweh for a pledge, an oath of their success and victory, the other side making their rage leader of their battle. But when the battle waxed strong, there appeared unto the enemies from heaven five calmly men upon horses with bridles of gold, and two of them led the Yehudim, and took Yehuda Maccabee betwixt them, and covered him on every side weapons, and kept him safe, but shot arrows and lightning against the enemies, so that being confounded with blindness, and full of trouble, they were killed, and where there were slain of footmen twenty thousand and five hundred and six hundred horsemen. As for Timotheus himself, he fled into a very strong hold called Gaura, where Chareus was governor. But they that were with Yehuda Maccabee laid siege against the fortress courageously four days, and they that were within, trusting to the strength of that place, blasphemed exceedingly, and uttered wicked words. Nevertheless, upon the fifth day, early, twenty young men of Yehuda Maccabee's company, inflamed with anger, because of the blasphemies assaulted the well, wall manly, and with a fierce courage killed all that they met with all. Otherwise, likewise, ascending after them, while they were uh, busied with them that were within, burnt the towers, and kindling fires burnt the blasphemers alive. And others broke open the gates, and having received in the rest of the army, took the city, and killed Timotheus, that was hid in a certain pit, and Chereus, his brother, with Apophonius. When this was done, they praised Yahweh with psalms and thanksgiving, who had done so great things for Yisrael and given them the victory. Maccabeum Shani, Sefer, second book of Maccabees, chapter 11. Now long after the victory over Timothy Seuss, Lysias, the king's protector and cousin, who also managed the affairs, took sore displeasure of the things that were done. And when he had gathered about fourscore thousand with all the horsemen, he came against the Yehudim, thinking to make the city a a habitation of the other people, and to make a gain of the temple, as of the other chapels of the heathen churches, and to set the high priesthood for sale every year, not at all considering the power of Elohim, but 
puffed up with his ten thousands of footmen and his thousands of horsemen and his fourscore elephants. So he came to Yehuda and drew near to Bet Shura, which was a strong town, but distant from Yerushalayim, about five stadium. And he laid sore siege unto it. Now when they thought were now when they th that were with Yehuda Maccabee heard that the he besieged the holds, they and all the people with lamentation and tears besought Yahweh that he would send a good Melech, an angel to deliver Yisrael. When then Yehuda Maccabee himself first of all took weapons, exhorting the others that they would jeopardize themselves together with him to help with brethren. So they went forth together with a willing mind, and as they were at Yerushalayim, there appeared before them on horseback one in white clothing, shaking his armor of gold. Then they praised Baharuk Atai Elohim Yahweh, praised the merciful Elohim of all, Tezavot, together, and took heart, insomuch that they were ready not only to fight with men, but with most cruel beasts, and to pierce through walls of iron. Thus they marched forward in their armor, having a helper from heaven. O Yahweh was merciful unto them, Hanan, and giving a charge upon the enemies like lions, they slew eleven thousand footmen and sixteen hundred horsemen and put all the others to flight, running away. Many of them also being wounded escaped naked, and Lyzeus himself fled away shamefully and so escaped, who, as he was a man of understanding, casting with himself what loss he had, and considering the Ivriim could not be overcome, because El Shaddai helped them, he sent unto them, and persuaded them to agree to all reasonable conditions, and promised that he would persuade the king that he needs to be friends unto them. Then Yehuda Maccabee considered to all that Lyzeus desired, being careful of the common good, and whatsoever Yehuda Maccabee wrote unto Lyzeus concerning the Yehudim, the king granted it. For there were letters unto, written unto the Yehudim from Lyzeus to this effort. Effect. Semicolon. Lyzeus unto the peoples of the Yehudim sends greetings. Semicolon. Yehuchanan and Av Shalom who were sent from you, delivered me the petition subscribed, and made request for the performance of the contents thereof. Wherefore, what things soever that were to be reported to the king, I have declared them, and he has granted as might, much as might be. And if then ye will keep yourselves loyal to the state, hereafter also will I endeavor to be a means of your good. But 
of the particulars I have given orders both to those and the others that come from me to commune with you. Fare ye well, the hundred and eight and fourteenth or fortieth year, the fourth and twentieth day of the month Dios Dios Scornthius. Okay. Dios Corinthius. Now the king's sefer, his book containing these words, semicolon. King Antiochus unto his brother Lysaeus sends greetings, since our father is translated unto the Elohim, our will is that they that are in our realms live quietly, and every one may attend upon his own affairs. We understand also that the Yehudim would not consent to our father, for to be brought unto the custom of the other people, but had rather kept their own manner of living, for which cause they require of us, that we should suffer them to live after their own Torah. Wherefore, our mind is that this nation shall be in rest, and we have determined to restore them their temple, that they may live according to the customs of their forefathers. You shall do well, therefore, to send unto them, and grant them shalom, peace, that when they are certified of our mind, they may be of good comfort and ever go cheerfully about their own affairs. And the suffer of the king unto the nation of the Yehudim was after his this manner. Semicolon. King Antiochus sends greetings unto the council, the Sanhedrin, and the rest of the Yehudim. If ye farewell, we have our desire, we are also in good health. Man Elias declared unto us that your desire was to return home and to follow your own business. Semicolon. Wherefore, they have, that will depart shall have safe conduct till the thirteenth day of Zan. Thycos with security, and the Yehudim shall use their own kinds of meats and Torah as before, and none of their manner of ways shall be molested for things ignorantly done. I have sent also men Elias that he may comfort you. Fare ye well, in the hundredth, forty and eighth year, and the fifteenth day of the month of Zan Thycos, the Romaim also sent unto them a sefer, a book containing these words, semicolon. Quintius Memimius and Titus Manlius, ambassadors of the Romaim, send greetings unto the people of the Yehudim. Whatsoever Lysaeus, the king's cousin, has granted, wherewith we also are pleased but touching thi such things as he judged to be referred to the king, after ye have advised thereof, send one forthwith 
that we may declare as it is convenient for you, semicolon, for we are now going to Antioch. Therefore, send some with speed, that we may now what is your mind. Farewell, this hundred and eighth and fourteenth year and fifteenth day of the month Zan Thikos. Maccabeum Shini Sefer 2nd Maccabees chapter 12 When these covenants, treaties, were made, Lysias <coughs> went unto the king, and the Yehudim were about their husbandry. But the governors of several places, Timotheus and Apollonius, the son of Ganaeus, also Hieronymus and Demophon, and besides them Nicanor, governor of Cyprus, would not suffer them to be quiet and live in peace. The men of Jaffa also did such a wicked deed. They prayed the Yehudim that dwelt among them would go with their women and children into the boats which they have prepared as though they had meant them no harm, who accepted it of it according to the common decree of the city, as being desirous to live in peace and suspecting nothing, but when they were gone forth into the deep, they drowned no less than two hundred of them. <clears throat> and <clears throat> when Yehuda heard of this cruelty done unto his countrymen, he commanded those that were with him to make them ready. Calling upon Elohim, Tezavot Zadok, Shofim, Elohim, the righteous judge. He came against those murderers of his brethren, and burnt the heaven by night, and set the boats on fire. And those that fled thither he slew, and when the town was shut up, he went backward, as if he would return to root out all them of the city of Jaffa. But when he heard that the Yamanim were minded to do in like manner unto the Yehudim that dwelt among them, he came to the Yamanim also by night and set fire on the haven and the navy so that the light of the fire was seen at Yerushalayim. Two hundred and forty stadion off. Now, when they were gone from thence, nine stadion in their journey towards Timotheus, no fewer than five thousand men on foot, and five, five hundred horsemen of the Arivium set upon him, <coughs> Aravim, whereupon there was a little sore battle, but Yehuda's side, by the help of Elohim, got the victory, so that the nomads of Abre, Arabia, come, being overcome, besought Yehuda for peace, promising both to give him cattle and to pleasure him otherwise. Then Yehuda, thinking indeed that they would be profitable in many things, granted them peace, whereupon they shook hands, and so they departed to their tents. He went also about to make a bridge to a certain strong city, which was fenced about with walls, and inhabited by people of diverse countries. The name of it was Cas Peace, but they were within to put such trust in the strength of the walls and the provisions of victuals that they behaved themselves rudely 
towards them that were with Yehuda, railing and blaspheming, and uttering such words as were not to be spoken. Wherefore, Yehuda, with his company, calling upon the great Yahweh of the world, who without rams or engines of war did cast down Jericho in the times of Yahshua son of Nun, gave a, pierce, a fierce assault against the walls and took the city by the will of Elohim and made unspeakable slaughters insomuch as a lake two stadion broad near adjoining thereunto being filled full was seen running with blood then departed they from thence 750 stadion and came to Haraka unto the Yuhadim that are called men of Toviyah Nineveh but as for Timotheus they found him not in the places for before he had dispatched anything he departed from thence having left a very strong garrison in a certain hold howbeit Dositheus and Sosipater, who were of Yehuda Maccabees captains, went forth and slew those that Tomatheus had left in the fortress, above ten thousand men. And Yehuda Maccabee ranged his army by bands, and set them over the bands, and went against Timotheus, who had about him a hundred and twenty thousand men of foot, and two thousand and five hundred horsemen. Now, when Timotheus had knowledge of Yehuda's coming, he sent the women, and the children, and the other baggage unto a fortress called Carnaim. For the town was hard to besiege, and uneasy to come unto, by reason of the straightness of all the places. But when Yehuda, his first band, came in sight, the enemies being smitten with fear and terror through the appearing of him who sees all things, <coughs> fled amain one running into this way, another running into that way, so as they were often hurt of their own men, and wounded with the points of their own sword. Yehuda also was very earnest in pursuing them, killing those wicked wretches of whom he slew about thirty thousand men. Moreover, Timotheus himself fell into the hands of Dositheus and Sosipater, whom he had besought with much craft to let him go with his life, because he had many of the Yuhadim's parents, and the brethren of some of them, who, if they put him to death, should not be regarded. So when he had assured them with many words that he would restore them without hurt according to that agreement. They let him go forth for the saving of the brethren. <clears throat> then Yehuda Maccabee marched forth to Carnion and to the temple of Atargatus, Atargatus, and there he slew five and twenty thousand persons, and after he had put to flight and destroyed them, Yehuda removed the host towards Ephron, a strong city, wherein Lysias abode, and a great multitude of diverse nations, and the strong young men kept the walls, and defended them mightily wherein also was great provision of engines and spears. But when Yehuda 
and his company had called upon El Elyon, who with his power breaks the strength of his enemies, the won the city, they won the city and slew 20,000 of them that were within. From thence they departed to Scythopolis, which lies 600 stayed on from Yerushalayim. But when the Yehudim that dwelt there had testified that the Scythopolitans dealt lovingly with them and entreated them kindly in the time of their adversity, they gave them thanks, desiring them to be friendly still unto them. And so they came to Yerushalayim, the Feast of Weeks approaching, and after the feast, called Shavuot, they went forth against Gorgias, the governor of Edom, of the who came out of with three thousand men of foot and four thousand horsemen. And it happened that in their fighting together a few of the Yuhadim were slain, at which time Dosithius, one of Basanor's company, who was on horseback, and a strong man was still upon Gorgias, and taking hold of his coat, drew him by force, and then he would have taken that cursed man alive. A horseman of Thracia, coming upon him, smote off his shoulder, so that Gorgias fled unto Marisia. Now, when they that were with Gorgias had fought long and were weary, Yahuda called upon Yahweh that he would show himself to be their helper and leader of the battle. And with that he began in his own voice and sung psalms with a loud voice and rushing a unawareness upon Gorgias men, he put them to flight. So Yehuda gathered his host and came into the city of Adullam. And when the servant, um, when the seventh day came, the Shabbat, they purified themselves as was their custom and kept the Shabbat, the Sabbath, in the same place. And upon the day following, as they, as the used had been, Yehuda and his company came to take up the bodies of them that were slain, and bury them with their kinsmen in their father's graves. Now under the coats of every one that was slain, they found things consecrated to the idols of the Yamanim, the Greeks, which is forbidden the Yuhadim, which is forbidden the Yuhadim by Torah. Even then every man saw that this was the cause therefore they were slain. All men before praising Yahweh, the righteous judge who had opened the things that were hid, betook themselves unto prayer and besought him that the sin committed might wholly be put out of remembrance. Besides, that noble Yehuda exhorted the people to guard themselves from sin. For so much as they saw before their eyes the things that came to pass for the sins of those that were slain. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of two thousand drachmas of silver, he sent it to Yerushalayim to a offer a sin offering doing therein very well and honestly, in that he was mindful of the resurrection, semicolon, for if he had not hoped 
that they that were slain should have risen again, it would have been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead, and also in that he perceived that there was great favor laid up for those that died in Zadokness, in righteousness. It was a Kodesh and Tov, a holy and good thought, whereupon he made a reconciliation for the dead, that they might be delivered from sin. Maccabeum Shani, Sefer of 2 Maccabees, chapter 13. In the 140th and 9th year, it was told Yehuda that Antiochus Eupator was coming with a great power unto Yehuda, and with him Lysaeus, his protector, the ruler of his affairs, having either of them a Yavani, power of footmen a hundred and ten thousand, and horsemen five thousand and three hundred, and elephants two and twenty, and three hundred chariots armed with hooks. Menelaus also joined himself with them, and with great dissimulation encouraged Antiochus, not for the safeguard of the country, but because he thought to have been made governor. But the king of kings moved Antiochus' mind against this wicked wretch, and Lysias informed the king that this man was the cause of all the mischief, so that the king commanded to bring him unto Berea, and to be put him to death, as the manner is in that place. Now there was in that place a tower of fifty cubits high, full of ashes, and it had a round instrument which on every side hanged down into the ashes. And whosoever was condemned of sacrilege, or had committed any other grievous crime, there did all men thrust him into death. Such a death it happened that wicked man to die, not having so much as a burial in the earth, and that most justly, for in inasmuch as he had committed many sins about the altar, whose fire and ashes were holy, he received his death in ashes. Now the king came with a barbarous and haughty mind to do far worse to the Yehudim than had been done in his father's time, when things when Yehuda perceived, he commanded the multitude to carry upon Yahweh night and day, that if ever at any other time he would now also help them, being at the point to put from their Torah, from their country, and from the holy temple, and that he would not suffer the people that had not, that had even now been but a little refreshed into the subjection to the blasphemous nation. So when they had all done this together, they besought the merciful Yahweh with weeping and fasting and laying flat upon the ground prostrate three days long. Yahuda having exhorted them, commanded they should be in a readiness. And Yahuda, being apart with the elders, determined before the king's host should enter into Yahuda, and get the city 
to go forth and try the matter in flight by the help of Yahweh. So, when he had committed all to the Creator of the world, and exhorted his soldiers to fight manfully, bravely, even unto death for the Torah, for the temple, for the Kodesh city, for the country, and for the commonwealth, he camped by Modin, and having given the watchword of them that were about him, victory is of Elohim, with the most valiant and choice young men he went in to the king's tent by night and slew in the camp about four thousand men and the chiefest of the elephants with all that were upon him and at last they filled the camp with fear and tumult and departed with good success this was done in the break of the day because the protection of Yahweh did not help him. Now, when the king had taken a taste of the manlessness of the Yuhadim, the manliness of the Yuhadim, he went about to take the holds by policy and marched towards Bet Surah which was a stronghold of the Yuhadim, but he was put to flight, failed and loss of his men, for Yehuda had conveyed unto them that were in it such things as were necessary. But Rodakos, who was in the Yehudim's host, disclose the secrets to the enemy. There, therefore, he was sought out, and when they had gotten him, they put him in prison. The king treated with them in Beit Sum. The second time gave his hand, took theirs, departed, fought with Yehuda, was overcome, heard that Philip, who was, was left over the affairs in Antioch, was desperately bent, confounded, entreated the Yuhadim, submitted himself, and swore to all equal conditions, agreed with them, and offered sacrifice, honored the temple, and dwelt kindly with the place and accepted well of Yehuda Maccabee, made him principal governor of Akko and Gerar. Came to Akko, the people there were grieved for the covenants, for they stormed, because they would make their covenants void. Lysias went up to the judgment seat, said as much as could be in defense of the cause, persuaded, pacified, made them well afflicted, affected, returned to Antioch. Thus it went touching the king's coming and departing. Maccabeum Shani, Sefer, 2nd Maccabees chapter 14. After three years was Yehuda informed that Demetrius, son of Sel Seleucus, having entered by the haven of Tripolis with a great power and navy had taken the country and killed Antiochus and Lysias his protector. Now, one alchemist who had been high priest had and had defiled himself willfully in times of their mingling with the other people, seeing that by no means he could save himself nor have any more access to the holy altar, came to King Demetrius in the hundred and one 
and fiftieth year presenting unto him a gold, crown of gold and a palm and also of the boughs which with which were used solemnly in the temple semicolon and when that day he held his peace howbeit having gotten opportunity to further his foolish enterprise and being called unto counsel by Demetrius and asked how the Yehudim stood affected and that they intended he answered thereunto semicolon those of the Yehudim that he called Hasidians whose captain is Yehuda Maccabee nourish war and are seditious and will not let the the rest be in peace therefore I being deprived of my ancestors honor I mean the high priesthood am now come hither first verily for the unfeigned care I have of things pertaining to the king and secondly even for that I intend the good of my own countrymen for all our nation is in no small misery through the unadvised dealings of them aforesaid wherefore O king seeing you know all things all these things be careful for the country and our nation which is pressed on every side according to the clemency that you readily show unto all for as long as Yehuda lives it is not possible that the state should be quiet this was no sooner spoken of him but others of the king's friends being maliciously set against Yehuda did more incense Demetrius and forthwith calling Nicanor who had been master of the elephants and making him governor over Yehuda and he sent him forth commanding him to slay Yehuda and to scatter them that were with him and to make Alchemus high priest of the great temple then the heathen that had fled out of Yehuda from Yehuda came to Nicanor by flocks thinking the harm and calamities of the Yehudim to be their welfare now when the Yehudim heard of Nicanor's coming and that the heathen were up against them they cast earth upon their heads and made supplication to him that has established his people forever Lelamvaed, and all who always help his portion with the manifestations of his presence so at the commandments of the captain they removed straight ways from thence and came near unto them at the town of Desa. now Shimon Yehuda's brother had joined battle with Nicanor but was somewhat discomforted through the sudden silence of his enemies nevertheless Nicanor hearing of the the manliness of them that were with Yehuda and the courageousness that they had to fight for their country dared not try the matter by the sword <coughs> wherefore he sent uh, Poseidonus and Theotius and Ma Tithiyahu to make peace so when they had taken long advisement thereupon and the captain and made a multitude acquainted therewith and it appeared that they were all of one mind they consented to the covenants and appointed a day to meet in together by themselves and when the day came 
and stood were set for either of them. Ludas placed our men ready in convenient places, lest some treachery should be sudden practice by the enemies. So they made a peaceable conference. Now Nicanor abode in Jerusalem and did no hurt, but sent away the people that came flocking unto him. And he would not willingly have Yehuda out of his sight, semicolon, for he loved the man from his heart. He prayed him also to take a woman, and to begat children so he married, was quiet, and took part of, his, of this life. But Alchemus, perceiving the love that was betwixt them, and considering the covenants that were made, came to Demetrius, and told him that Nicanor was not well affected towards the state, for that he had ordained Yehuda, a traitor to his realm, to be the king's successor. Then, the king being in a rage, and provoked with the accusations of the most wicked man, wrote to Nicanor, signifying that he was much displeased with the covenants, and commanding him that he should be sent, he should send Yehuda Maccabee prisoner in all haste to Antioch. When this came to Nicanor's hearing, he was much confounded in himself, and took it grievously that he should make void the articles which were agreed upon, the man being in no fault. But because there was no dealing against the king, he watched his time to accomplish this thing by policy, notwithstanding when Yehuda Maccabee saw that Nicanor began to be uh, churlish unto him, and that he entreated him more roughly than he was wont, perceiving that such sour behavior cannot be of good. He gathered together not a few of his men, and withdrew himself from Nicanor. But the other knowing that he was notably uh, prevented by Yehuda's policy, came into the great and holy temple, and commanded the priests that were there offering their usual sacrifice to deliver him the man. And when they swore that they could not tell where the man was whom he sought, <coughs> He stretched out his hand toward the temple, and made an oath in this manner, semicolon, If ye will not deliver me, Yehuda, as a prisoner, I will lay this temple of Elohim even with the ground, and I will break down the altar, and I will re erect a notable temple unto Bacchus. After these words, he departed. Then the priest lifted up their hands toward heaven, and besought him that was ever a defender of the nation, saying in this manner, O Yahweh of all things, who have need of nothing, were pleased that your bed, your house, your temple of your habitation should be among us. Therefore, now, O Kodesh, master of all Zadokness, keep this house ever undefiled, which lately was cleansed, and stop every unrighteous mouth. Now was there accused unto Nicanor one Razus, one of the elders of Jerusalem, a lover of his countrymen, and a man of very good report, <coughs> who, for his kindness, was called a father of the Yuhadim. 
For in former times, when they mingled not themselves with the other people, he had been accused of Yehudaism and did boldly jeopardize his body and his life with all vehemency for the faith of the Yehudim and Torah. So Nicanor, willing to declare the hate that he bore unto the Yehudim, sent above 500 men of war to take him. For he thought by taking him to do the Yehudim much hurt. Now when the multitude would have taken the tower and violently broken into the outer door, the bade that fire should be brought to burn it, <coughs> he being ready to be taken on every side fell upon the sword, choosing rather to die manfully than to come into the hands of the wicked, to be abused otherwise than beseemed his noble birth. But missing his stroke through haste, the multitude also rushing within the doors, he ran boldly up to the wall and cast himself down manfully among the thickest of them. But they quickly giving back and a space being made, he fell down into the midst of the void place. Nevertheless, while there was yet breath within him, being inflamed with anger, he rose up, and though his blood gushed out of him like spouts of water, and his wounds were grievous, yet he ran through the midst of the throng and standing upon a steep rock when as his blood was now quite gone he plucked out his bowels and taking them in both his hands he cast them upon the throng and calling upon Yahweh of life and the Ruach to restore him those things again. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Echad. Thus he died. Maccabeum Shani, 2nd Maccabees, chapter 15, the conclusion of the book. But Nicanor, hearing that Yehuda and his company were in the strong places about Shamron, resolved without any danger to set upon them on the Sabbath. Nevertheless, the Yehudim that were compelled to go with him said, O oh, destroy not so cruelly and barbarously, but give honor to that day, which he that sees all things has honored with kodeshness above all other days, and sanctified it. Then, the most ungracious wretch demanded if there were a mighty one Echad, in heaven that had commanded the Shabbat to be kept. And when they said, There is in heaven a living Yahweh and mighty who commanded the seventh day the Shabbat to be kept. And then said the other, and I also am mighty upon the earth, and I command to take arms and to do the king's business. Yet he obtained not to have his wicked will done. So Nicanor, in exceeding pride and haughtiness, determined to set up a public moment of his victory over Yahuda, and them that were with him. But Yehuda Maccabee had ever sure confidence that Yahweh would help him. Wherefore he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, but to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven, and now to expect the victory and aid which should come unto them from El Shaddai. And so comforting them out of the Torah and from the prophets, the Nabi, 
and with all, putting them in mind of the battles that they won afore, they made them more cheerful, and when he had stirred them their minds, he gave them charge, showing them wherewithal the faults of the heathen, and the breach of the oaths. Thus he armed every one of them, not so much with defense of shields and spears, as with comfortable and good words, and besides that, he told them a dream worthy to be believed, as if it had been so indeed, which did not a little rejoice them. And this was his vision, semicolon, that Aniyahu, who had been high priest, a virtuous man, and a, a good man, revered in conversation, gentle in condition, well spoken also, and exercised a child in all points of virtue, holding up his hands, prayed for the whole body of the Yuhadim. This done, in like manner, there appeared a man with gray hairs and exceeding glorious, who was a of a wonderful and excellent majesty. Then Oniyahu answered, saying, This is a lover of the brethren, who prays much for the people, for the holy city, to wit, Yirmiyahu, the prophet of Elohim. Whereupon Yirmiyahu, holding forth his right hand, gave to Yehuda a sword of gold, and in giving it spoke thus, Take this holy sword, a gift from Elohim, with which you shall wound the adversaries, thus being well comforted by the words of Yehuda, which were very good and able to stir them up to valor, and to encourage the hearts of the young men. They determined not to pitch camp, but courageously set upon them, and manfully to try the matter by conflict, because the city and the sanctuary and the Bet Yahweh, the temple, were in danger. For the children that they took for their women, and their children, their brethren, and folks was in least account with them, but the greatest and principal fear was for the Kodesh place, the holy temple. Also, they that were in the city took not the least care, being troubled for the conflict abroad. And now, when as all looked what should be the trial, and the enemies were already come near, and the army was set in array, and the beast conveniently placed, and the horsemen set in wings, Yehuda Maccabee seeing the, the coming of the multitude, and the diverse preparations of armor, and the fierceness of the beasts, stretched out his hand toward heaven, the Shamayim, and called upon Yahweh, that works wonders, knowing that victory comes not by arms, but even as it seems good to him, he gives it to such that are worthy, semicolon. Therefore, in his prayer, he said after this manner, O Yahweh, you did send your Melachim, your angel, in the time of Yahazekel, king of Yehuda, Yizik Yahu, pardon, king of Yehuda, and did slay in the host of Can. Kariv, a hundred fourscore and five thousand. Wherefore now also, O Yahweh of Tezavot of heaven, 
Send a good angel before us for a fear and dread unto them. And though the might of your arms might those be stricken with terror that come against your Kodesh people to blaspheme. And he ended thus. Then Nicanor and they that were with him came forward with shofars and songs. But Yehuda and his company encountered them and encountered the enemies with invocation and prayer, so that the fighting with their hands and praying unto Elohim with their hearts, they slew no less than thirty and five thousand men. For through the appearance of Elohim they were greatly cheered now, when the battle was done, returning again with joy, they knew that Nicanor lay dead in his harness. Then they made a great shout and noise, praising El Shaddai in their own language, Evrim, and Yahuda, who was even the chief defender of the citizens both in body and mind and who continued his love toward his countrymen all his life commanded to strike off Nicanor's head and his hand with his shoulder and bring them to Yerushalayim so when he was there he called them of his nation together and set the priests before the altar. He sent for them that went, were of the tower, and showed them vile Nicanor's head and the hand of the blasphemer, which with proud brags he had stretched out against the Kodesh temple of El Shaddai Yahweh. And when he had cut out the tongue of that wicked Nicanor, he commanded that they should give it by pieces unto the fowls, and hang up the reward of his madness before the temple. So every man prays toward the heavens, the Shamayim, the Shekinah, the glorious Yahweh, saying, Baruch Atah Yahweh, blessed be he that has kept his own place undefiled. He hanged also Nicanor's head upon the tower, an evident and manifest sign unto all of the help of Yahweh. And they ordained all the common decree in no case to let the day pass without solemnity, but to celebrate the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is, which in the Aramaic tongue is called Adar, for the day, Mordecai's day. Thus went it with Nicanor, and from that time forth the Ivrim had the city in their power. And here will I make an end. And if I will have well done, and as is fitting the story as it is that I which desired, semicolon, but if I slenderly and meaningly, it is that which I could attain to, for as it is hurtful to drink wine or water alone, and as wine mingled with water is pleasant and delights the taste, even so speech finely framed 
delights the ears of them that read the story. And here shall be an end. Thus concludes the second book of Maccabees. Shalom in the name of Yahweh from YHWHY.com.